class. How are you all today? Doing good? Good. Okay, class. If you are ready to roll with me on this adventure of the learning process, give me a thumbs up. Okay, we're all ready. Okay, class. Today we are going to be learning about Lewis uh, Leon Thurston. We can uh, endearingly call him LL if you prefer to, okay? So, LL, he's born in 1887. He dies at 68 years old in 1955. But through these 68 years of his life, LL makes some huge, huge contributions in such things as psychology, psychometrics, stats, and the human intelligence, okay? So, we're gonna rewind a little bit and talk about the beginning stages of LL's life and his education. We're gonna more specifically focus on his college years, but this is what we've got for you, okay? LL, he gets his master's in education from Cornell, okay? He gets his PhD in psychology from the University of Chicago, and then he studies at the Division of Applied Psychology at Carnegie Institution of Technology. Okay. So with this, he first and foremost becomes an assistant to one Thomas A. Edison. Okay? You guys all know who Thomas Edison is? You've all heard his name before? Yes, okay. After this, he goes on to teach at the University of Minnesota. He then will teach at the Carnegie Institute of Technology. And then finally, he will be a professor at the University of Chicago. Okay? So, oh, and lastly, sorry, I forgot this part. He worked at the Institution for the Government of Research in Washington, D.C. So what I need you to do, class, is turn to your partners and tell me, or tell your partners what you know so far about L.L. Thurston. Teach. Okay. He went to a university. <laughs> yes, he did. Class. Yes. Okay, so this is where we're going to go now. We're going to figure out what he did for IQ. So. First, we're going to backtrack and say before Thurston, there was a man named Spearman, okay? And this is what Pe uh, Spearman says. Spearman, at that point in time, then had the dominant unitary uh, concept of intelligence. intelligence. And Spearman found that, or thought, that all mental tests tended to fall on one specific factor, one major factor, okay? So, with this factor, he suggests that scores are fueled by a common metaphorical pool, okay? which he called a pool of mental energy, which he named the general pool or factor G. Okay, so we're gonna remember it as G. Turn to your partners and tell me what you're gonna remember this factor as. Oh my God. G. 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 Okay, perfect, class. So, with Spearman, he thinks that all of it comes onto one big thing called factor G. Well, Thurman, or Thurston comes into play, and he says he comes up with the theory of primary mental abilities that is a model of human intelligence, okay? So, Thurston says that G was a statistical artifact. So he need, uses a new approach to, uh, as a factor analysis to look at different mental capacities. He finds that intelligent behaviors do not come in one factor, but seven. So these seven independent factors include primary ability, word fluency, verbal comprehension, spatial visualization, um, number facility, associative memory, reasoning, and perceptual speed, or perceptual, perceptual speed, excuse me. Okay, thumbs up if you are still with me on this part, at the, to this point. Perfect, okay, still with me. So, when he analyzes this information, he finds that from a mental test of data from people with similar IQs, he finds evidence supporting his theory, supporting that there are seven different primary factors to a human intelligence. Okay, so he's thinking, yeah, like right on, I've got it. You know, Spearman who? I'm the new man in town, okay? But then he takes a whole bunch of highly intelligent, heterogeneous group of children and studies them. And what does he find? He finds that he fails to find the seven, spatial, or the seven factors of human intelligence to be individually there. So you can't just have one, you can't do one of, they're not separate, okay? So what he finds, is that he actually finds that they're a combination of everything and evidence of G. Mm -hmm. Remember, G comes from Spearman's theory that all of it comes from one. So now uh, Thurston is thinking, gosh, I've got this group of uh, adults that prove that my, the my theory is right, that there are seven different factors. But then I've got this group of children that they're saying they're not separate. There's evidence of G. What's going on here? 
so being a very smart man that he is, I mean, he's got a whole bunch of PhDs, doc, you know, the whole shebang, he comes up with this really elaborate mathematical process, okay? So, with this mathematical solution, he resolved the contradictory, contradictory results. So his final, the final of his theory was a compromise that accounted for the presence of both the seven factors and the G factor, okay? So, tell me, turn to your partner and tell me so far what he found with his mathematical solution. Go. He found seven factors and G factor. And something like the kids don't know. Mm -hmm. Seven factors or something? Yeah, it on top. Class? Yes. Okay. So, what he finds with this compromise, again, that both can be present, he helps lay the groundwork for future researchers who propose hierarchical theories and theories of multiple intelligence. So he plays this huge role in how we start to think about how intelligence or IQ comes into play. So, his major contributions to it was the theory of primary mental abilities. He also, through this with his mathematical solution, developed the statistical technique of multiple factor analysis, okay? So, finally, uh, last part of this is I want you to turn to your partners and tell me what his major contributions were to IQ. Go ahead. Um, the mathematical factors. Class? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Now that we know that he contributed to lay the groundwork for future research in IQ, I would like to thank you guys for letting me come up here and teach you about L.L. Thurston. Thank you.